This radio show is a paid placement. Welcome to Wealth Michigan with the Macintoshes. Minus a Macintosh today. I'm Mark Kelly. Glad you're with us. Mindy Macintosh, the founder and president of Macintosh and Associates. Mindy is out doing her due diligence, making sure that she's ready for the open enrollment for Medicare that comes up October 15th through December 7th every year. So she's off doing some Medicare education, and she loves helping people with Medicare. So when you get to that point, you have questions, you know, you get to around 65 or older, and you have questions, you can always call the team because Mindy is here to help. It's 877-222-8849. And, of course, the other part of that Macintosh family would be Nolan Macintosh. Nolan is here with us today. I'm Mark Elliott. So glad you're with us today. Nolan, how are you? You ready to handle this without your wife? Hey, we, you know, we've done this a couple of times before, Mark, just you and I. And I, I think Mindy's done it maybe once or twice. But, you know, we kind of joke sometimes off air about, you know, when she's gone that uh, she always says, make sure we still have a radio show when I get back. So we'll make sure we still have a radio show when Absolutely. Get back. <laughs> she gets a little nervous about what we might talk about. So that's okay. Yeah, well, that's what's lo- that's what we great. Now, what's awesome is that um, Mindy and I are celebrating 15 years as we're airing the show today. So it's... um. Interesting. It's yeah, happy great. anniversary. Great. Thank you. Three yeah. kids. Three kids. 15 years later, it's been great. Yeah, Can't imagine great. anything different. Yeah, so it's, it's that's been awesome. great. That's awesome. And, of course, you started your world in the athletic training world, the physical therapy world, uh, with your doctorate degree. But you joined Mindy in 2018. What took you so long? Because Mindy started the company in 04. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things that uh, for a while I just thought that this is what I was supposed to do and, and uh, watched Mindy be able to, you know, not miss anything with the girls and just intrigued me. And ultimately we needed to help our firm because we didn't have people doing market accounts. We were actually outsourcing people that were doing market accounts. We just felt like we were missing that piece and that kind of what got the ball rolling. And so now the rest is history. Been here since 2018. Yeah, absolutely. And you can always go to the website to learn more about Mindy Nolan and the team at Macintosh and Associates. It is wealthmichigan.com. Wealthmichigan.com. A lot going on. This week is when the president approved the student loan payback. And the families have to make under 125000 which is probably a lot of people, I would guess. But then there's people that don't make over 100000 that probably never went to school, went to a trade school, had to pay for that. Does that factor in? I don't know. But if you're on a Pell Grant, then you get 20000 What about if it was 45 years ago when you paid off your student loans? Do I get my ten grand, Nolan? That's the question. Uh, Yeah, no, unfortunately you don't. And I think there's a double-edged sword, unfortunately. I think, you know, it's um, for the people that, you know, if you want to consider it done it right and and gotten their loans paid off, they don't get much of a reward there. And the people that, you know, still have loans, you know, I don't know how much 10000 is going to help them. I just know that it's going to cost a couple billion um, and probably couple, from the like taxpayers. Couple, like $300 billion or something. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this was not in the budget, right? There's no budget that we've passed, right? The, it wasn't in the Inflation Reduction Act, which they had just passed. It's not in, in the SECURE Act. It was not in the CARES Act, right? So none of these bills they passed have passed and, you know, done in the past equated for a $300 billion earmark tag on this. And so... I don't know where this money's coming from, I can guess, right? We can guess that's come probably from a taxpayer standpoint. So, you know, from a tax strategy standpoint, which we talk about all the time on the show, there's probably some things that uh, we should be looking at because I think with some of the spending that's going on that wasn't even in the budget, it's probably going to be affecting some of the taxes that we're seeing in the future. Yeah, but you mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act. I mean, that's one area where we'll get money back because the 87,000 new IRS agents are going to be looking for ways Mm. to give us more tax return. They're not looking to tax us more, right? The government's here to help. Mark, you, we're supposed to have a radio show when we get back. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, when exactly. back. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, I don't I don't think, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? This 87,000 people that are hiring from IRS is not to save people on taxes. It's because, I mean, there are some justifiably so that have probably not done what they're supposed to from a taxation standpoint, and they need to be audited. Um, that's really what the government is doing. They're looking for places that have not done people that have not done the the right thing and and audit and so that's a little bit of a concern from a public eye and and you could have done everything right and still miss something right and that's that's the challenge sometimes is that you could still be working with an accountant and just have something that just was missed 
Um, and so that's what it is that they're trying to gain back some of those taxes that may have been lost in, in the past. So. And that is certainly one of the big parts of the dream focused wealth plan that Nolan and Mindy and the team at Macintosh and Associates can help you. And that is a tax efficient strategy. So we're all pretty confident taxes are going up. We know by 2026, the tax law that went into play in 2018 ends and we go back to the 17 rates and brackets. Now that doesn't mean that's exactly what will happen. We don't know for sure, but we're pretty confident taxes are going up, right? So are you going to be tax efficient? Think about your traditional 401k and IRA. They've never been taxed. And by the time you hit 72, your required minimum distribution age, you now have to start taking money out, whether you need it or not. And so the IRS says, hey, we want your, your money now. And we didn't want it when you were just out of college. We wanted you to have the opportunity to grow it a bit for us. And so that was wise on the government's part. So the idea is, do you have a tax-efficient strategy? Noel and Mindy and the team at Macintosh & Associates can certainly help walk you through all that because it's about income, investment, taxes, health care, uh, legacy planning, Social Security is in the income part, Medicare is in the health care part. That's a lot of moving pieces in this dream-focused wealth plan that Mindy and Nolan can help you with. You want to talk to them, you have questions or concerns, there is no cost to chat with the team. It's 877-222-8849, 877-222-8849. All right, let's go right into your wheelhouse, Nolan there's a lot of studies that always go on. Well, there is a theory right now that Americans have lost a collective, collective $3.4 trillion from their 401ks and IRAs in the first half of 2022. We know it was really bumpy on the markets. My theory is, well, wait, my 401k went down, but I didn't lose anything because I haven't cashed it in. Mm -hmm. It's going to come back is my hope, right? So how do you look at this first half of 2022? We know the markets can always be bumpy, but where are you on this? You know, markets were down. There's no question. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we preach a different tune. I, I think a lot of people look at it and uh, particularly in the 401k world, because a lot of times 401ks aren't getting any advice, right? They're, they're just, you know, whatever they put it in when they started in, in their 20s, maybe 30s, maybe even 40s. Is what they kind of kept it in. And a lot of times when we see clients, they have it in some target date fund because they've been told that, hey, this is the best place to be because it'll de-risk you as you get closer to retirement, which again, target date funds are not all created equal. And we've seen some people with target date funds where it's past the date, like 2020, and it's still in a moderately aggressive mixture. So anyway, that being said, we look at it from an opportunity standpoint because your dollar cost averaging when you're putting into your 401k. So some people have stopped putting into, I would completely disagree with that statement that we're stopping contributions because we don't know where the market's going from here. You know, last year, the market hit, 2021, it hit it 50 times, all time high, 50 times in some indexes. And so the point being is what we're saying is, is would you rather buy a car that's overpriced or would you rather buy one on sale? And that's the same with taxes too. But ultimately, when we're doing what's called dollar cost averaging, the theory is, is that we're buying at different times during the year, like a 401k when you're just putting money in from your check every week. What happens is by the end of the year, you actually have more shares that you've been able to buy because you're not timing the market. You're saying, okay, I'm putting in at certain times during the year and sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. You actually come out ahead in the end. So when we look at it from that strategy standpoint, number one, it's good to do when the market's up, good to do when the market's down. But right now, we're actually able to get some things at better cost right now. You're able to buy more shares for your money. So from that standpoint, I think it's more of an opportunity right now than what we've had in the past because we can't necessarily just assume the market's going to continue to rise. And, and like I said, it was the longest bull run we've ever seen. And so therefore, now we're back into some correction territories. And so that's this is a good thing. Some growth has to have some pain. And I think this is a great place to be and, and a good place to start putting, you know, in my opinion, more money into it. So is this also an opportunity maybe to, to sit down with somebody that maybe, let's say, we know the 401k in-service distribution it happens. Typically, companies allow you to move your 401k into an IRA. And there's no taxes because you're just sliding it across. And you certainly need somebody like Nolan and the team at Macintosh & Associates to help walk you through that. But to me, that seems like a pretty good chance when things are down a little bit to slide money into your own IRA. And it's maybe even an opportunity to move some money into the Roth world when things mm -hmm. are on sale because it's, you're not going to pay as much in taxes when your accounts have hit a, taken a little bit of a hit. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we, use a, we kind of use a slinky here in the office. It's, we, we stole it, to be honest with you, from another advisor that we know quite well. But and just talk about how the market's compressed. And when you compress it, if we know we're converting a certain dollar amount, right? Not a certain share amount, but we know, let's say we're converting $20,000 or whatever it may be. You know, your 20000 that you converted last year goes a lot less further than it would this year because the $20,000, we are converting more shares to tax-free dollars. So again, it gives us an opportunity here at the office. We'll do Roth conversions at the end of the year if the market's been really good, just because we don't want any surprises from an income standpoint. But we've been calling 
our clients that, you know, we've been doing Roth conversions pretty consistently with them or a different tax strategy through a fixed index universal life policy and saying, okay, now's the time to put some cash in and uh, Roth convert because right now the market's compressed. So we're not waiting till the end of the year right now. We're, we're really kind of looking at it from let's do this now type of thing. So if that's some of the strategies you want to look at and at 59 and a half with an in-service distribution, phenomenal opportunity to do that. 877-222-8849. And there's no cost to chat with the team. There's a lot of questions, right? Well, Nolan, when can I retire? Do I have enough? Will my money last as long as I do? Will my loved ones be okay if something happens to me? Really, at the end of the day, we want to know if I or if we retire, am I or are we going to be okay? That's really what we want to know so that we can go enjoy our retirement and we're not you know, stressed all the time about, holy cow, I can't. I don't think we can go eat well with our friends this week because I think our money's a little tight right now because we don't know. We're guessing. We hope we're going to be okay, but we don't know. Why not sit down with the team at McIntosh & Associates? They're here to help. 877-222-8849. No cost, no obligation, no pressure. 877-222-8849. Just getting started with Nolan McIntosh. This is Wealth Michigan with the McIntoshes back right after this. According to the U.S. Debt Clock, in the time you hear this commercial, our nation's debt will go up by $1.5 million. That's $2 billion a day, $15 billion a week. Right now, our debt is more than $30 trillion and climbing fast. The question is, how do we pay it off? The answer is increasing taxes. Now, think about your retirement accounts. Do you want to pay taxes on some of that money now when rates are historically low or later when rates are potentially higher? Whether you should pay taxes now or in retirement depends on a lot of things. Mendy and Nolan McIntosh and the team at McIntosh & Associates know what to look for. Mendy and Nolan can help you create a plan so your retirement is as tax efficient as possible. Call 877-222-8849 to set up a visit with Mindy and Nolan McIntosh and McIntosh & Associates. That's 877-222-8849. Firm offers insurance services and may not give tax advice. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. Get started today to develop your own dream-focused wealth plan with the team at McIntosh & Associates. Schedule a complimentary first visit today. Call 877-222-8849. Glad you're with us today for Wealth Michigan with the McIntoshes. Mindy out today, out gaining more knowledge about Medicare. Glad to see that. Don't forget, October 15th through December 7th, as always, every year, is the open enrollment for Medicare to make changes in your plans or move to a different one, a Part D, the drug. And it's a great opportunity just to get a checkup, really, during that time, October 15th through December 7th. And Mindy certainly is here to help you do so. 877-222-8849. And you can also call that if you want to sit down with Nolan and talk about the markets. You got a little nervous when the markets went down. How do I handle that? You know, with the rising interest rates of the Fed that they've been doing this year, that certainly affects the bond market. When interest rates rise, bond values go down typically. So there's a lot of moving parts here. You can always call the team at McIntosh & Associates. They are here to help you if they can, but they don't know if they can until you reach out. So there's no cost for this. 877-222-8849. You can always go to the website to learn more, wealthmichigan.com. You know, Nolan, when you think about retirement, there's a lot of questions. So we're going to talk today about how in the world do we hopefully put ourselves in a better position for that comfortable retirement, that confident retirement, because that's part of your plan. The Dream Focused Wealth Plan is trying to give people some confidence and clarity moving forward. So there are some things that we can do to help secure our financial future. And so Nolan's going to help us break it all down. Nolan, when you think about the Employee Benefit Research Institute did a study that found that retirees who say they feel comfortable in retirement have done the same four things. So you're going to talk about these four keys with our listeners today. But the first one, and I think we all get it. I don't know if we can all achieve it, but it's certainly a great goal to have. And the first one for that comfortable and confident retirement is going into retirement with little or no debt. How do you look at that? Yeah. And you know, people are Dave Ramsey fans. It's kind of, you know, his his take on that, right? The Financial Peace University is anytime you're owing somebody money, that's less money you're going to have, right, for what you want to do in retirement or money you can put towards retirement. So we get that strategy, uh, particularly in times what we're seeing now with interest rates going up and things of that nature where 
we had a different talk, you know, prior when interest rates were at zero, it may be worth, you know, having a little bit of a mortgage or maybe worth having a little bit of a car payment because uh, the loan was so low in interest rate wise that we kind of look at it from the strategy standpoint, no matter what we're holding from an investment strategy standpoint, that that should on average, you know, outpace what you're paying in interest. Now we've shifted, our, sh our talk has shifted a little bit. Mortgage rates are well over, you know, in some places 6%. And so that changes our strategy because obviously from the standpoint, if you're paying on a 6% mortgage and the market's down right now, you're not winning um, that game. And so it makes it a little bit tougher for you to be able to overcome, you know, the rate of return, what you're getting in your market account versus what you're paying in interest on that mortgage. So I think it's a, a smart thing to try and get things down. And, and, and the biggest, usually household item that we see is, is the mortgage, right? The debt mortgage that maybe a 15 or 30 year, things of that nature. So we try and help and walk people through on what we think strategy wise. And and some of these things are, you know, even credit card debt, right? The credit card debt, they're always tied to interest rates. And if interest rates rise, you're going to see more being paid in interest than you are during your principal on those. And so we try and do a snowball effect and say, okay, if we have multiple credit cards out there, let's pay off the small one first, maybe. And then, you know, start attacking the, you know, the ones that maybe have a larger interest rate. And then, you know, maybe, you know, once we get those figured out, then maybe we go after the bigger ones. So we try and help people where they're at so that way they get a lot more comfort in figuring out what their budget is for in retirement because that is a key on being able to, you know, not outlive your money is making sure that our expenses are within reason on what we're doing in retirement. So really, that's one of the things that I think it makes sense to come in and sit down with you even 10 years out from retirement. Let's say you're 55, you're going to retire at 65. Great time to come in and sit down with a team at Macintosh & Associates. And then a lot of people do want to go in with no mortgage, right? But today that's kind of difficult. You know, my parents bought a house when I was in fourth grade, but I know their house cost 17500 And then mm -hmm. in 2000, that house was for sale and it was 99000 mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, you guys can't make that much money on my dad's house. <laughs> but I did go look at it and it was exactly the same as I remembered it. That was pretty funny. But that's a big decision because somebody says, hey, I'm 50, 75000 is all I owe in my house. I've got half a million sitting in this IRA. If I just pull that 75000 out and pay it, then I don't have to worry about it anymore. But there are some ramifications <laughs> when you start pulling money out of the IRAs, right. for example, that are traditional, they've never been taxed. That 75 might be 100,000, maybe, that's or right. 90, I don't know. Yeah, and I think that's the key, and that's part of a spend down strategy that we have to look at, right? I mean, you know, where are we taking these funds from to be able to pay some of these debt items off? And, and a lot of people don't realize that withdrawal order can make a difference in thousands of dollars. Some people are like, oh, I'll draw from my, you know, maybe they have a Roth. I'm going to start drawing from my Roth because it's tax free right now, and, you know, I'm going to, you know, kind of pick that, you know, one this year to save on tax. And, and, that can be completely furthest from the truth because if we know taxes are probably going up, why would we not want to draw from something when taxes are up on a tax-free entity than when taxes are down? So our strategy would be different now than maybe even the future just because of where we're at for taxes. So withdrawal orders can have a huge impact, in our opinion, on what it looks like in retirement. And so, you know, right now, theoretically for us, you know, if we have a lot of money in the bank, that's what we call our low-lying fruit. Um, you're not making anything on it. You're losing to inflation. Um, it's just sitting there. It's kind of dead money. So you just maybe use some of that money to pay off some of these debts. Or the next strategy down would be, you know, like we said, taxes are kind of on sales. So let's be taking some from these tax deferred 401ks or IRAs or something of that nature while we have you know reduction in, in taxes right now. And then the third might be from a non-qualified account. And then, you know, obviously, because there's growth that's tax money. What is a non-qualified so, account? That always confuses yeah, me. Yeah, what sure. Is? Yeah, so a lot of people, so there's three different tax buckets when we have clients come in. It's sometimes nice to explain, you know, on a screen with them. But three different tax buckets, really. The tax deferred, which means you never pay tax on anything. And so all the growth and every dime you've ever put in there is taxable when you take it out. Um, and that's charged at ordinary income tax rates, so whatever your tax bracket is. The second bucket is called the taxable, meaning a non-qualified account. Okay, what happens there is, let's say you put $10,000 in there, your original investment of $10,000 is not taxable, but anything that grows above that, then you start paying what's called capital gains rates on long-term uh, gains or short-term gains rates or ordinary income. So it's taxed differently, possibly, depending on you know how long you've held the assets, but then the growth is the only thing that's taxable on those. So that's the second bucket. And then the third bucket is your tax-free. So your fixed index universal life policies that you use cash against and your Ross, those could all be tax-free. So those are the three buckets. And we love people to be able to have all three buckets because it makes a difference. And like I said, withdrawal orders on how we look at what you should be doing in retirement because it can make a big difference. Like I said, thousands of dollars in our opinion, just on where you're drawing your funds from. 
Yeah, and that is the second key to a comfortable and confident retirement is having a clear spend-down strategy because you're in the accumulation phase during your working years. You're saving, 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 trying to be able to get to that point where you can retire. When you get to retirement, though, now it's a distribution phase. Now you're paying yourself basically your paycheck. So how do you do that? And that's a key to this. And if you have any questions about any of this, it's 877-222-8849. Mindy and Nolan and the team at McIntosh & Associates here to help you uh, with your situation. It is about you when you come in and sit down with them. It's not about them. They're not trying to sell you anything. They don't even know what you need. They need to find out about you and your situation. It's 877-222-8849. And Nolan, for me, I'm 62, as I've said. So in theory, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll retire at 70, Mm -hmm. maximize social security. Mm -hmm. Uh, And they keep giving these cost of living adjustments. I mean, it might be 20 grand a month by the time I retire. (laughs) It probably won't be, but still there's a lot of moving parts here and when and how do you take social security and all of that. But the clear spin down strategy, that's kind of back to what you were just talking about. What do I pull from first? Maybe years zero through five of retirement, I'm pulling from this account. Ooh, something's happened in the market. I got to change mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. And once we put a plan in place, it's not written in stone because things could still happen. But the spin down strategy to me is one of the big keys in making sure that your money will last, or at least helping make sure that your money will last as long as you need it. Because if you pull them in the wrong order, you can cause yourself some real problems, I would think. Oh, yeah. I mean, taxable problems, right? I mean, you know, if you, we kind of alluded to it that, you know, if instead of paying that mortgage off with your IRA, now all of a sudden, instead of, you know, 75000 you got to pull 100000 That could jump you up into a different tax bracket to where you're paying a higher tax than what you wanted to. And that's just like a, a credit card where your interest rate goes up. So, and the other strategies we have to look at too, is because we deal with a lot of people under the age of 65 as well that maybe retired when they were 62. And so they have three years of uh, room before they hit Medicare age. Well, a lot of people don't realize that if we don't do an effective spend down strategy on what your income is, your healthcare premium. So now we're robbing Peter to pay Paul a little bit because now we've drawn from, from an asset that is included in your income that maybe we should have done a different strategy in keeping your income lower so that way you don't pay as much on health premium. So there are some different strategies even just in life situations that we would have to look at. And and we never like surprises for our clients. So we always tell our clients, hey, if you have a health insurance plan with us and you think your income's going to go up or down, either way, right, we can input that into the system. We might be able to save you a couple bucks on your health insurance premium or, you know, vice versa. Hey, you, you want to buy that car? That's great. You know, our strategy would still be to use this income base based strategy where it's going to add income to your overall income for that year, but you have to be aware that it's going to increase your premium. And that's why I think it's so important because we have unfortunately had some issues in the past where they had an advisor, didn't understand how health insurance worked under age 65. And they're like, oh yeah, just go ahead and take it. Then they come to us and didn't realize that that would add income. They're like, why did I you know, get basically taxed heavier come tax time on my health insurance? And we're like, well, did you draw something extra out of your you know, IRA or 401k. Well, yeah, you know, I didn't, didn't, wasn't told anything different. Just, you know, that I needed money. So I took it. So that's why I think sometimes it's important that we have to have that full wheel of what health insurance versus income versus tax strategies versus what's going on in the market. We have to have that important spend down strategy just in instances that can, like I said, it may make a difference to not take money on just even on your health insurance premium. So if you want to sit down with a team at Macintosh and Associates and go through the Dream Focused Wealth Plan, it starts with a discovery meeting, and that's to find out about your hopes, your dreams, your bucket list, then to figure out, okay, well, where's your income going to come from? How much do you need to maintain your lifestyle? Then your investment strategies. So you're now retired or you're getting closer to retirement. So do I need to be a little smarter with my money? How do I set that up? Maybe don't take as much risk. Everybody's situation is different. I, I probably will still have to take risk with my market money so that I have enough to actually retire someday. Tax efficient strategies to be efficient in that category. Health, long-term care, legacy and estate planning. Social Security, again, is in the income part. Medicare is in the health care part. 877-222-8849 to chat with Mindy and Nolan and the team at Macintosh & Associates. They are here to help you if they can. We're talking about this Employee Benefit Research Institute that found that the people that retire really comfortably and and confidently do the same four things. We've got two more to get to. We'll get to those when we come back. Stay with us. We're back right after this. If you're close to retirement, you probably hear about Medicare all the time. When to sign up, how to sign up, what your options are. But have you heard how you might be able to lower your future Medicare costs with proper planning before you retire. It's true. The McIntosh and Associates team can show you how. 
It's not for everyone, but you could potentially save in future Medicare premiums. See if this strategy could work for you. Call McIntosh & Associates now to set up your visit to start working on your plan. 877-222-8849. That's 877-222-8849. If you want to pay the lowest price for your future Medicare coverage, start planning today. Set up your visit now with the McIntosh & Associates team. Call 877-222-8849. Firm offers insurance services and is not affiliated with the U.S. government. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC. Schedule your complimentary first visit with the McIntoshes right now. Call 877-222-8849. That's 877-222-8849. Welcome back to Wealth Michigan with the Macintosh. No Macintoshes <laughs> today because Mindy not here today, but no one is with us. I'm Mark L.A. Glad you're with us. And it's really about having a plan when it comes to your retirement. And Mindy and Nolan and the team of Macintosh and Associates are wanting to know about you. What is your situation? What do you? How much do you need? What's going out? What about this? What about? There's so many moving parts. Uh, all you have to do is give them a call. There's no cost for this. It's a kind of a place to get started. And you may not become a client of Macintosh and Associates. Nolan and Mindy might say, "Hey, you're doing a great job. Just keep doing what you're doing." Well, that would be nice to hear, wouldn't it? So it can work that way. And sometimes it can say, "Hey, maybe don't retire next year. Maybe let's put it off a couple." Uh, so everybody's situation is different. They have to learn about you and where's your money and how does it work and all of that. But they're here to help. It's create a plan for the next 20, 30 plus years. So it's a long time partnership, if you will. 877-222-8849 is the number. Again, there's no cost for this. 877-222-8849. And you can always go to the website to learn more, wealthmichigan.com, wealthmichigan.com. I'm Mark Kelly. We're talking about this study from the Employee Benefit Research Institute that found that retirees who consider themselves to be comfortable in retirement have all done really the same four things. And so the first two that we just talked about, one, go into retirement with little or no debt. Sometimes that's easier said than done, mm -hmm. but I think we all get that, right? The second one was create a clear spin-down strategy. What accounts do you pull from first? How do you make sure that your money's going to last as long as you need it to? And certainly that is a, one of the keys to uh, having success in that category. Now, there's two more keys we're going to talk about. The next one is having some sort of employer provided assistance. Now, we used to think, my grandparents, it was pensions, right? Well, I don't have a pension. So what can you tell us about this category? Yeah, that's a challenge. We see more and more, less and less pensions, obviously, and, and for due reason. You got to remember, you know, my grandpa retired from GM. My dad retired from GM in their early 50s, and they've been on the pension program for a lot longer than they were supposed to. Um, my grandpa will be 98 in January here. So you know, it's one of those things that, um, you know, the pension gone by the wayside because the company's on the hook, right? They have to be able to pay out these pension benefits, you know, for all these employees in the past. So now that's why they're switching over to the 401k because now the, obviously the uh, employee is kind of on the hook, you know, and they only contribute to whatever possibly matching that um, they've ever come up with, but the employee has to put something in it as well. So pensions are, are kind of a, a tricky thing. And, and even with pensions, it's one of those things that a lot of people don't understand what do I do? Because a lot of times they have election benefits, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, stereotypically they'll have 100%, you know, where just if, uh, you know, let's say the, the person is married, then, you know, the spouse, if something happens to the other, the spouse would get nothing. Or there's, you know, some type of joint survivor annuity, they call it. So where a lot of times typically we see a 75, 50, and 25%. And obviously what happens is, is obviously when the person's living, the employee, if they're collecting the pension, then they would get a reduction while they're alive. And then at least the spouse would get 75, 50, or 25% or whatever the value was of what they were drawing when they were alive when they pass away. So there's some different things there that we would walk through with our clients and say, okay, you know, based on budget, because I think that's kind of what we talked about in the first, based on budget budget, if you pick 100%, yes, you get a higher payout, but your spouse isn't going to be able to maintain the income and expense ratios because obviously, you know, now the part of income is gone from the household. So that's something that we always want to look at. And we want to look at it, obviously, you know, where is other income coming from? Do we have other investment accounts, you know, and so that that weighs in on what we would pick uh, as far as an annuity, you know, election for the pension. Now, a lot of times companies now are, are saying, hey, let's get off the hook. Let's allow the employee to take a lump sum option on their pension. 
And honestly, that could be a great option. I'll be honest with you. When Mindy and I look at things, a lot of times I'd say probably 90% of the time, we're going to take a lump sum option. And so I ask people because they say, well, you know, sometimes they'll come in and say, well, we don't like annuities and da, da, da. And so we, Mindy and I, you know, educate on the types of annuities out there. And we say, well, this is the kind that we put into a fixed index annuity. And we say, you know, this is how we're doing it. But if you don't like an annuity, then don't, don't collect on your pension because it says it right in there. It is actually an annuity when you're turning on this income stream and it's, it's supposed to be set for your life and possibly your spouses. So we look at those options and say, OK, based on what we're seeing, what do we want to do and what election benefit do we want to look at? And that's a big one. When you think about it, our grandparents, the income was never a factor for them because they had a pension. They had Social Security. Most of them probably didn't have a lot of debt either. They were pretty smart with their money, Mm -hmm. especially if they grew up during the Great Depression time. Having your own pension would be super fantastic. And if you don't have one, does it make sense to create your own? And that's not right for everybody, right? So Nolan and Mindy will sit down with you and discuss this. That's the idea is how do we put you in a better position than you are? Is that possible? They don't really know until you sit down, but having that kind of your own pension, creating your own is a pretty unique way Mm -hmm. to think about retirement. 877-222-8849, again, is the number to learn more about that. Does it make sense for you? How would you do it? There's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that we don't really understand about the annuity world, the insurance world, because it's not all about the market monies. There's also the safe and protected Mm -hmm. side and the insurance side. And Mindy and Nolan can help you in both of those worlds. 877-222-8849. 49 to learn more 877-222-8849 the final one is something that you help people with and i think a lot of times i think if you probably polled america mm-hmm. i would say the highest percentage of age that people are taking social security now widows and widowers are eligible at 60 mm-hmm. 62 is the first time i could have taken it which is what i am now but i'm not because i'm still working and mine i was born in 1959 so my full retirement age is 66 and 10 months Those that are turning 62 this year, that means they were born in 1960. Their full retirement age is 67. Mm -hmm. So it changes kind of depending on when you were born. But we know there's no point in waiting after 70 because it's not growing anymore. But I would say a lot of my friends are retired because they, they had a job, whether they were a school teacher or they worked at a business that had a pension, they almost all have taken their Social Security at 62, Mm -hmm. most of them. And I'm like, did you look into that? Well, no, but I got a pension, so I'm taking Social Security, too. Okay, well, good. But you have the software to go through to show people, hey, if you take it at 62 or 63 or 68 or whatever, hey, this makes sense. Because the one key to Social Security is also is when a spouse passes, the lower of the two Social Securities goes away. So sometimes that more in Social Security can really help mm-hmm. the surviving spouse. How do you look at Social Security? And there's some untangible, right? So we look at it from a standpoint of, yes, you know, you know, from a monetary standpoint, how does it make sense in your investment strategies and and income strategies? What makes sense on numbers? The other thing we look at is longevity. I don't, you know, something we can't ever really put a thumb on. And so, yeah. And then some people are emotional, right? They're just like, I've worked hard for it. So I want to collect it as soon as I can. And we get that, but you know, it might not be the smartest move. So I think there's some intangibles there that we look at um, that kind of goes into our decision making on when to turn on social security. And then there's obviously some, you know, like we said, monetary that we say, okay, if you don't collect, this is what it would be. So we look at those strategies and say, okay, if we turn it on now, this is what you're going to get. But you know, sometimes we're not turning on social security just for the pure tax situation, right? If we're trying to do a tax strategy for you, does it make sense to add more income to something if we're already trying to, you know, do something to convert maybe into Roth or a fixed index universal life policy if you don't need the income? Well, no, it doesn't make much sense. So we delay, we delay Social Security, let it grow while we're going through these tax strategies. So it's one of those things that we, like I said, we use software and we, we plug it in and we use another software called Retirement Analyzer to plug that in and so show you know clients, okay, this is your income part. This is where your investment part is. This is where your budget is. And this is where we're at as far as, you know, we call it solving the red and green lines, right? We want to have a green line all the time. We don't want to have a red line. So we put that social security strategy in there based on what we think is, is best for the client. Now, that may mean that, you know, some people are just like, yeah, we're collecting that 60. Maybe delay one spouse's and, you know, maybe start collecting on the other or vice versa. You know, those are some of the strategies we look at as well because maybe we delay the other person's instead of taking at that same time instead of just collecting at 62. Now, again, there's some clients that come in and we have no choice. 
we're very honest with them. We say, you need the income. We are not delaying. You need to take it at 62. There's nothing in our system that shows that you guys can afford to not take it. So again, we're very honest with clients. We try and give them the best option available on what we think is going to be the best for them. And so that's why we visually show them, this is why we think we need to delay. This is why we think we should take it. And so I think that helps out a lot in just saying, hey, we're going to turn on at the age of 62. I think that's a big, big piece of the puzzle is, is how do we really figure out some of those strategies? And that, that can make a big difference in retirement. So 877 877- 222-8849. If you just want us to do it, Mindy just actually did, to my knowledge, you know, on our web, we have the webinar that she did on social security. So you can check that out at wealthmichigan.com if you want to get some good ideas on social security timing. Yeah. And Mindy is always doing some webinars. It seems like she's always got something going on. <laughs> uh, so you can find out a lot more just by watching Mindy on, on our webinars on mm-hmm. the website, wealthmichigan.com. But you can also find out more about Nolan and Mindy and the team. And there's some great information on the website as well, wealthmichigan.com. So to have that comfortable and confident retirement, there, there are no guarantees, right? Just like Nolan said, we don't know how long we're going to be here and we don't know if we're going to have a health issue. So one of the huge things you can't overlook would be health care, long-term care. So that's why Mindy and Nolan, their dream-focused wealth plan, it's an income strategy, right? Got to replace the paychecks. It's an, an investment strategy. Are you taking enough risk, not enough risk? How do you look? Everybody's situation is different in that category. Tax-efficient strategy is super important moving forward because we all think taxes are going up. Health care, long-term care, legacy, estate planning, Social Security, Medicare, that's all a part of the Dream Focused Wealth Plan. 877-222-8849. 877-222-8849. Nolan, back with our final segment of Wealth Michigan with the Macintosh on today's (laughs) program. Back right after this. Right with us today for Wealth Michigan with the Macintoshes. Mindy Macintosh, the founder and president, started the company in 04. She is out doing some Medicare education, if you will, because we're coming up October 15th through December 7th is the open enrollment time for Medicare where you can make changes to your Advantage plans, maybe move into the supplement, or there's just a lot of moving parts. And Mindy, that's a big part of what Mindy really enjoys doing is helping people with those decisions because it can get complicated. You don't really know. And if you have questions about any of that, you can always call the team, 877-222-8849. Now, Nolan is more the market guy at Macintosh & Associates. So Nolan, with the markets, we know the first half, we started the program today starting about the fact that there was, what, $3.4 trillion Americans have lost from their 401ks and IRAs in the first half of 2022. The markets rebounded a little bit. Now they're bumpy again, and that's kind of the way it might go for another year or so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the markets and where things are going right now? Because to me, Mindy would love to go buy your three girls back to school clothes when they're on sale. The market's on sale, but we don't look at it the same way. We kind of freak out a little bit when the markets go down. But I think, hey, my 401k is buying more right now. That's a good thing because I'm not retiring yet. Yeah, well, I mean, might say on sale, but if inflation's there, I'm assuming we're still paying more this year than uh Last year, I think some of the news reports I saw that uh, I think they were saying like 57% of parents actually are cutting other costs in other places to just pay for school supplies. And they're thinking just under a thousand a kid is how much it's going to cost. So, you know, so you're right. I mean, it's one of those things that we look at from a market perspective is there's challenges and it's not. So the hard part is that people don't understand is that the market is has cycles. And unfortunately, we've gotten so used to non-cycle, non-volatile cycles in the last uh, you know decade that uh, we don't understand that this is not abnormal for a market that's just how it goes and so uh, it's one of those things that we want to look at it from a standpoint is, is we can get and now are there some strategies that we can look at obviously that maybe some certain sectors that we may be looking at and you know instead of staying away from some others and so obviously from an advisory role we're probably more educated not to say we're smarter we're just more educated in the market than somebody that has a 401k that's just dumping money into a target date fund. So we try and do what's called asymmetrical investing. So when the market's doing what it's doing now, we're not losing as much as the market is. And when the market's, you know, really doing well, we're participating in a significant portion of that, but we're not necessarily, you know, trying to beat it. So I think there can be some challenges there for people when they're looking at that. And and unfortunately, the odd lot investor, the, the people that just kind of, you know, put in their 401k, they get in the market and they pull out of the market and they're trying to time the market and they just really haven't done a really good job of that. And there's been actually some new statistical research that some of these robo advisors, right? Some people use these uh, computer based models to know when to get in on the market. They've been horrible this year. They actually have done a lot worse than what we've seen in the past. 
So that's why, you know, sometimes having some emotional connection to the market does help with decision making might be better than some computer model that has no emotional ties to it. So it's one of those things that we always try. And like we said, it, it at 59 and a half, we fully suggest that if we can, we start rolling monies out of a 401k because of you don't have as many choices, number one. And number two, nobody's actively watching it to do what we just talked about, some of that, hopefully that asymmetrical investing for you to be able to do it. And, and people say, oh, I don't want to pay somebody to do that. And the problem is, is they don't realize that, again, research has been done on this. The person that usually does self-investing usually has a 2 to 3% rate of return less than somebody that's actually actively managing their account, and that's net of fees. So you're gaining, on average, 2 to 3% more to have somebody watch it and handle it for you to be able to look at the market and say, okay, this is how we want to make some changes. So again, 877-222-8849, if you're nervous about the market, let us at least look at it. And we do this too. Sometimes we say, hey, you know, we know they're not at 10 and a half. Let me give you some suggestions on based on what you have in your 401k on what I would do based on what we're seeing for market trends and what your risk is. So again, 877-222-8849. Any questions on that or anything that you would like us to help you with, that's what we're here for. And you can always go to the, the uh, web to find out more and watch Mindy's webinars that are on there. It is wealthmichigan.com or just give them a call. It's easy to do that. As no one said, 877-222-8849. McIntosh & Associates Incorporated is an independent financial services firm that utilizes a variety of investment and insurance products. Investment advisory services offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management LLC, AEWM. AEWM and McIntosh & Associates Incorporated are not affiliated companies. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. McIntosh & Associates Incorporated is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by McIntosh & Associates Incorporated. Please remember that converting an employer plan account to a Roth IRA is a taxable event. Increased taxable income from the Roth IRA conversion may have several consequences, including, but not limited to, a need for additional tax withholding or estimated tax payments the loss of certain tax deductions and credits, and higher taxes on Social Security benefits and higher Medicare premiums. Be sure to consult with a qualified tax advisor before making any decisions regarding your IRA.